Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting with an interesting breakthrough, and a team at Carnegie Mellon have developed a way to add dynamic real-time focusing to displays. Using something called a split Lohmann multifocal system, the method can rapidly focus highly specific areas on displays, even down to individual pixels, opening up the potential for very immersive VR headsets with highly realistic, natural-looking depth. More details will be revealed when the team presents at SIGGRAPH later this year. Moving on to automation, and Google's DeepMind unveiled a new foundational AI agent which learns to operate different robotic arms. Dubbed RoboCat, this agent learns to perform a variety of tasks across different arms, and then self-generates new training data to improve its technique. In their demonstration, the researchers visually showed RoboCat the goal it would like it to achieve, say stacking objects in a certain way, then they'd reset the area, and the robotic arm figured out on its own how to recreate what it had seen. In similar news, a collaboration between Meta's AI Research Division and Carnegie Mellon has created the Visual Robotics Bridge System, which teaches robots how to complete tasks by having them watch videos of humans doing them first. The team used this system and trained the robotic arm to carry out a range of tasks, from opening drawers, cupboards and bins, to picking up cans of soup, picking up corded phones, placing pans on a cooker and more. Meta AI also announced VoiceBox, a new generative text-to-speech model which they say is 20 times faster than any comparative model out there. Rather than just training a model on a particular voice and recreating it like the many existing tools out there, VoiceBox has a range of other interesting features, such as being able to change words in existing audio by editing a text transcript, transferring voice styles, or changing the language of existing voice audio while keeping the same voice pretty wild stuff, and the company says they have no plans to release this tool for the time being. In another example of the proliferation of AI models into everyday life, Opera released their new One browser last week, and interestingly, they have included the ARIA chat GPT-based AI chatbot, which can answer general questions, write summaries, or generate code directly in the browser. This feature is completely free to the user, though they say anything entered may be used to train future open AI models, and who knows what else is done with all that data. German robotics company Angsar announced recently that they had secured 2.5 million euros in funding to further develop their autonomous trash removal robot. It really reminds me of the poop bot from the Netflix sci-fi show Maniac, though this little bot is aimed more at picking up trash in green spaces. It has a 30 litre trash capacity and can run autonomously for 8 hours. Another area of automation that really fascinates me is warehouse logistics, and one of the leaders in this trend is Geek Plus. If you've ever wondered how massive e-commerce companies deal with enormous amounts of orders, well chances are, something like this is probably being used. Their scalable systems allows these businesses to sort and fulfil tens of thousands of items per day, and over the past few years, many large retailers have been installing their bots worldwide. In manufacturing, researchers at MIT and Inkbit recently presented a new algorithm for packing objects for powder-based 3D printing. Since 3D printing methods such as selective laser sintering can print multiple objects together without needing support material, dense packing of parts massively speeds up large orders for print houses. In their demonstration, they showed their algorithm packing hundreds and even thousands of different shaped and sized objects with high density and efficiency, claiming it's much better than any existing similar algorithm. In other news, a team at Washington State University have stumbled across a new way of making metal 3D printed parts much stronger by combining materials. Taking cues from natural structures in bones and tree rings, the team found that by nesting mild steel inside stainless steel using directed energy deposition, a pressure caused by the metals cooling together increased strength by up to 42%, which could be a big deal due to the cheap and readily available nature of the technique. I saw this useful site the other day too, which helps you pick the perfect filament colour for your 3D printing projects. Filamentcolors.xyz is a simple tool that has categorised tonnes of printing filaments by colour, so if you need something specific for a project this might be helpful. In flying news this week Voltero unveiled the first prototype of their Casio 330 electric personal aircraft at the 2023 Paris Air Show. This is a very similar design to the Lilium jet I mentioned a while back, though this vehicle is propeller-based. EV toll designer Volocopter also recently partnered with German medical non-profit ADAC Luftrettung to provide two Volocity aircraft for its EMS and rescue missions, with a view to delivering a further 150 in the coming years. It seems like in the next few years we'll be seeing many more weird and wonderful electric flying machine designs in the skies. 
In open source electronics news this week, Hackaday officially kicked off the 2023 Cyberdeck Challenge, so if you've been working on any Gibson-esque portable computer projects, this could be for you. The competition runs through summer to August 15th, and the top three entries will each get $150 gift cards to spend at DigiKey. And ending this week with a bit of laser news. Earlier in the year, NASA announced what they claim to be the fastest space-to-ground communications link, pushing 200 gigabits of data per second over their terabyte infrared delivery system between a satellite in orbit and a station on Earth. A team at ETH Zurich have also been working on their own laser comm system. In their demonstration, the team used optical data communications lasers to transfer one terabit per second data streams from the Jungfraujoch mountain peak to the Swiss city of Bern, approximately 50 kilometers away. They envisage this system potentially being an alternative to costly deep sea cables and believe it would be easy to scale it up to 40 channels, allowing it to expand to 40 terabits per second. All right, that's everything for this update. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.